Hey there, this is Kurt Hollowell with another tutorial from Doggy Dog Games. This one I'm going to be covering the Vector Ray Gen um, plugin from JengaFX uh, into Unity. So if you have the plugin, go ahead and open up Unity and, and import the project. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is open up the Scenes folder and check out all these demos. That'll give you a good idea of um, what you can do. But uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and start in a blank scene. Um, Go ahead and just create a new game object and add a vector field script to it. All right, and uh, so the first thing I want to do is just go over the, put these parameters here, and you can see well, as soon as you add the script, you kind of get the, the bounding box for the vector field um, already. But what we can do is drag in a vector file that we've exported from the Vector Ray Gen software. Um, so when you export from Vector Ray Gen, just export it as a text file, drag that into your project, and um, we have a few that we've included with this plugin already under this files folder. So let's go ahead and drag one in, and uh, you can see that it updates the scene, and now we have our vector field. Um, so you can see right under here, under the vector field, you can see the number of vectors in each dimension. So we have six in each dimension for this vector field. And under that, there's this read file button. So if we change the vector field, just click that read file button and it'll update the field accordingly. And bring the helix back. Uh, then we have this low color and high color, and that's just for the visualization of the field. Um, and what that's showing is the intensity of the field at each point. And um, what that is, uh, how that's created or calculated is basically um, for each vector, how many of its neighbors are pointing towards it. So you can see at the top here, we have a high intensity, and at the bottom, low intensity. So that's basically just supposed to give you an idea of um, the flow of the vector field a little better. Um, then we have the size of the field, so you can go ahead, like uh, for example, I'm going to resize this field to 10 by 10, and um, just makes it bigger. You can also adjust the scale if you want, um, and it's, let's say you just want to use the handles, you, you can do that as well if you'd like. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, oh, I'm not done yet, here you go, here's an, uh, the magnitude. So we can have a constant magnitude for our field, or we can have an animated magnitude. And I'm going to go ahead and show that with some, some particles. I've created some particles uh, beforehand here, basically just emitting some particles up. And on those particles I've created, a uh, on the particle system, I've added a particle controller, vector field particle controller script. Uh, in this script, all you need is um, this little checkbox that says, oh, do you want all fields to affect these particles? or a custom set of vector fields. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But just with uh, that script is all you need, if we go and hit play, and I'm just gonna switch over to the scene tab, you can see that as soon as the particles hit the vector field, um, the forces from the field get applied to it. Now, uh, now we get back to this magnitude parameter. Um, here's where we can adjust the force of the field. So if I set it down to low, it's just a small force and I can start to ramp up. You could have a negative value if you want. Um, and we can also have an animated magnitude. So to do that you just click the animate magnitude button and then uh, we can drag in what's called a curve animation. Now again we've included a few of these animations already but if you want to create a new one all you have to do is do a game object, oh no I'm sorry, assets, create curve animation and it'll create a new one in whatever folder you in you're in. I'm just going to call this demo. Um, so few parameters for this animation. Basically there's a curve. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this curve which is basically kind of similar to a sine wave. Um, we have the time for the animation. I'll set it to 10 seconds. And the amplitude, let's just put it at 100 for now. So the way this is works is that it'll take 10 seconds for the animation to go from uh, the left of this curve to the right of this curve and the values along the way will get multiplied by the amplitude. So uh, let's say we're you know, a few seconds into this animation and we're right here. The value from the curve is about minus 0.3, but that'll get multiplied by 100. So let's go ahead and see that in action. Let's drag it in. 
And um, now you can see there's positive values for about five seconds, and then they go negative. Let's go ahead and adjust the time so we can make see that a little quicker. So you can see over five seconds, it'll have a positive magnitude and then a negative magnitude. Cool, that's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in um, another vector field. Let's go ahead and create another one. Oops. And uh, let's get a different vector field for this one. How about this normalized inward? And I'll hit read file. And then let's also change the colors on this since we have multiple fields that are gonna be overlapping. So I'm gonna make this one blue. There you go, and then I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. Uh, so this vector field basically has uh, all the vectors pointing inward. Um, so what I wanna show off now is that these particles can get affected by multiple fields. Go ahead and hit play. Now uh, this second field just has a constant magnitude. I'm gonna bring the first field magnitude down to about 50 and uh, the vector field in the middle, let's give that a strong magnitude. Oh, 100 is pretty good. Let's give the surrounding one just a vector field of like 10, for example. So you can see uh, the first field is starting to move things outwards, and then as soon as they hit that center field, uh, they get sucked in. And um, we can also just have these particles be affected by one of the fields. If we uncheck this, all fields, then right now it's not being affected by any, um, but we can just change the size of this list and bring a vector field in. So right now it's only being affected by the red field, because that's what I've dragged into the list or if I want it to only be affected by the blue field, we could do that. Um, you know, we can move these fields around. But that's it, that's the basics. Um, we can also, real quick, we can have rigid bodies be affected by these vector fields as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the rigid body scene because that already has a good example of this. Um, in this scene, we basically just have a bounding box with some colliders on it. We have some red spheres and we have some blue spheres. And then we also have two vector fields. Um, there is a blue field which has just a rotation on it and the red field which has that uh, normalized inward so all the vectors pointing towards the center. Uh, the red one has an animation on it. Let's go ahead and look at that real quick. That's similar to the one we had before. It's a sine wave, so it'll go negative, then positive. The blue field just has a constant magnitude. Let's go ahead and hit play. So in this scene, you can just see that rigid bodies can be affected by these fields as well. And if you want a rigid body to be affected, all you have to do is add a vector field rigid body controller script. And it's just like the particle script. You can have it be affected by all fields or just a custom set of vector fields. Uh, that's basically it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, reach out to us at doggydoggames.com. Uh, under contacts, just shoot us an email, we'll get back to you. Uh, happy coding, I hope you enjoy the package.